Hi me. So, uh, I don't know if this affects everyone, but, like, it definitely affects you. You've been working for at least the past eight, nine years on becoming bilingual. And so, part of how you've been doing that, bilingual in English and Spanish, part of how you've been doing that is you have been taking Spanish courses. You took five years of Spanish in high school because of IB. They smushed three years of Spanish into two years, so that's how that works. Then you continued with your Spanish lessons all the way through college. And a problem arose and you didn't realize what it was until senior year. So in IB, in your junior year, so 2015 I think, you had to read three works in translation because that's how the internal assessment went. You read these books and then you wrote on them. One of the books you read was Chronicle of a Death Foretold by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. And uh, you read that in English. And it was great. It was fine. You read this book that had a whole bunch of religious symbolism and how everyone in the town basically knew that this man was going to die and he was an allegory of Jesus who was betrayed by uh, Peter or something like that. It had a lot of magical realism. I was like, great, fine. About two... Three years pass, you are in Professora Aire's class where um, you have to read, in Spanish, Cronia de una muerte anunciada, which, if you can't tell, is the original version of Chronicle of a Death Foretold. And for some reason, you had a lot of difficulty discussing it, um, and you didn't really know why, because, like, you read this book before, you read criticisms on it before, you read interpretations on it before, you should have, like had this down, but you didn't. Later on, in another class with Professora Aire called Love Stories, which was a 400 level class, which meant it was a senior class, which was awesome, because I think you were a sophomore, you read um, La Casa de Bernarda Alba by uh, Federico Garcia Lorca, I believe that's his name, and you read it in Spanish, it's a play, it was about this mother whose husband had passed away, and so in a period of mourning, she locked herself, her daughters, and her mother with dementia in their house, because that's how they mourned, and they wouldn't see the outside for like five years. The daughters all hated this, because one of them was like 28, and she was like, Mom, I need a husband. And two of them were seeing the same guy, but, like, the guy who was engaged to the oldest daughter really was in love with the youngest daughter, who was potentially pregnant, and it, it's a drama. It's dramatic in Spanish. And, like, everything's fine. You have a great time reading it. You, there's a moment that's really sad, and that moment is when the grandmother with dementia wants to go outside and wants to find a husband and wants to be a young girl, and it's sad in Spanish. Fast forward to senior year. You are in a dramatic writing class. No, not dramatic writing. Uh, you took a class on drama beforehand. And you're reading this play called The House of Bernarda Alba in English. And I was like, wait a minute, where have I heard this before? And why am I having such difficulty with it? Turns out it's because you read it originally in Spanish. So, and you didn't know this uh, was what was going on until one of your classmates who natively speaks Spanish, focus on me, focus on me, I know I'm pale, come on, you can, there you go. One of your classmates who natively speaks Spanish was discussing the differences between the Spanish and the English, and it was like, oh, that makes so much sense, because that scene with the grandmother is a comedy in English. So, turns out you have that problem, we're at four minutes, I love you, bye!